hope you're all well. Last couple of days in the Middle East for me, so I'm just making the most of my time. I'm heading into a district known as Al Karama today. I'll tell you a little bit about it. It's uh, got a lot of history and we're going to visit one place in particular because I've got a sweet tooth for all of those that know me. So let me show you what it's all about. So, Karama, ladies and gents, that's where I am. It's one of the older parts of Dubai. It's known for not having such high-rise buildings. As you can see behind me, more low-rise. Here is very traditional. You've got independent fashion retailers, all different types of cuisine, small businesses, local businesses. The population is very high with regards to the actual size of the area. Now, I'm not quoting specific numbers, but maybe a couple of square kilometers, a little bit more here or there, and you've got a huge population in comparison to other parts of the Middle East and parts of Dubai. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of stuff going on. I would argue that it is uh, heavily populated with, uh, I guess, people from the subcontinent, India, Pakistan, etc. And that's why you'll notice a lot of restaurants with their cuisine and the food quality here is known to be authentic you know with recipes coming from the actual root countries but what are we doing here today guys i've got a sweet tooth i found a company who are doing really really well on social media so i thought why not check them out because to have a a base in a district a local district like this and to be able to drive your business with a successful social media following and you know ensuring that the quality is there in your product it just goes to show that you don't need to have a flashy office in the center of New York, London, du Dubai in this case. You don't need it. As long as you've got that entrepreneurial spirit, as long as you've got that drive to make your business succeed, you can do it from anywhere. So now we're out of the heat in the cool AC within the store we're just waiting for the lady behind all of this uh, to make her way down they are very busy obviously with the corona covid situation the shop doesn't have uh, a full house with customers due to the regulations but business is still ticking as usual and we're going to check out what's going on in the back shortly and i'm going to introduce you to the brains behind the operation so guys, I've managed to uh, pull one of the three brains of the Sugarholic operation to my table. And she's also blessed me with a coffee, so I thank you very much. Oh, and thank you for allowing me to come to Sugarholic today. Oh, so can you please, for the viewers on YouTube, can you just tell us how did all of this come to life? <laughs> okay, so this was definitely not planned. Uh, in 2010, my sister and I wanted to raise funds for child's education in India and I had just finished learning how to bake and decorate cakes and she had learned how to make chocolates. Like where did you do that? Is that a formal certification? Yeah, or? it was like a four month decorating course. So it was not baking, it was decorating. So that's perfect timing guys because the final ingredient of the sugarholic operation is here. <laughs> Mr. Vishal, nice to meet you. Corona Thank you so much. Have a seat. Yes. I have found out a lot of the history yes. from Ravisha just now. And she's mentioned that there's the three of you. So you came in at the perfect time. And I was yeah. just asking, um, what is your responsibility and what role do you play in this operation? Is it just operations, pardon the pun? Um, yeah, it is operations really. Operations and finance is what we, what I personally look at. So, a decade is roughly when this was born yes. from that exhibition. Yes. Have all three of you been involved from that first day? Or did your sister, obviously you and your sister, did, did you start helping from day one? Or I mean, I used, to, I used to only help her in the sense that when they have an event or they had large orders. If you need a driver, a, 2010 to 2011, almost like a driver, or you know, like I have to deliver, sit next to me. Well, that, that's our job, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but that's then 2011, midway, is when we uh, decided to open up and he came in. So we have right now two kitchens, one storefront and one office from where, um, where, we, operate. where we operate. So yes. we're just in the storefront, right? Yeah, just yes. in the storefront. How have you achieved it? Because there'll be there'll be people who watch, whether it's on your stories yeah. or my YouTube channel or whatever. People will want to know how do you do it. What is the secret to the, the formula? Fortunately, I think 
uh, you rightly mentioned that there is, a, let's say, the new Dubai or the urban Dubai, like we call it, um, and we could possibly be there. In fact, we would be opening soon in one of those areas. It's all stuck thanks to COVID. But uh, our, our still a Watch base. this space. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but our, uh, our base is still over here and we're happy to be here is simply because our business doesn't really rely on um, A, tourists or B, walking clients. People order cakes for events and they're not going to celebrate it. In a bakery, they're going to celebrate it all over the country. So let's talk so, about COVID for a second though. Mm -hmm. You mentioned it. Sorry to interrupt you. Mm -hmm. I'm in the events industry. Mm -hmm. You know, My background is obviously audiovisual mm -hmm. across the Bay and London. COVID has knocked my business 100% because mm -hmm. yeah. no one's getting married anymore. There's no more public events. Has that had a big impact on your business? Completely? Yeah, we had uh, lots of large LPOs that mm -hmm. went on hold. Right. Um, but what we've realized is that uh, you know still people are at home and they still want to celebrate even if it's small. Yeah. So, for example, if someone was looking to celebrate a birthday with 50 people and have a large cake, now it's just five of them at home. Small. So it's a small it's cake. Small. So we're still doing those small cakes. Um, you know, it's funny, a lot of people are sending out gifts, mm -hmm. like as cakes. So like, I don't know if you can see at the back, we have a huge order. order. So this lady uh, has given birth like 20, 25 days back and because she can't celebrate, She's ordered 60 odd cakes to distribute it to her. Yeah, like we do in our culture. So yes. in our cultures, guys, whenever we have uh, a newborn in the family or if there's a wedding or something, we distribute what would normally be traditional Indian sweets or Pakistani sweets. Sugarholic have tapped into that market. Yeah. So how much is this one? How much? <laughs> this guy, is the, he's the ruler. Yes. That's why he's sitting on the, on the pedestal. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, is that, uh, is this just for display? Obviously, it is only for display, it's not yes. actually got cake inside, yes, right? Exactly. But we can obviously do it. Wow, and people order cakes like this because yes. they're obviously very, very passionate about the, I guess, the, the monarchy. Yes. Of, of yeah. more, than, more, more than that, I think people tend to order, like, we, we've had a few people who order for their wives. Like the celebrity that they love. No, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, what's the weirdest order that? Okay, I'll ask both of you because you yeah. might not have the same opinion. Ravisha, mm -hmm. what's the weirdest yeah. order that you've had? We recently did a cake of an island in Italy. It was a 60 kilo cake. I can send you pictures later. 60 kilo cake. 60 kilo or more. 60 kilo was just a sponge. Once you, anyways. So it was an island. Was an island of Portofino. Of Portofino, where I don't know what was the occasion. It was just someone's birthday. We had to make the yeah. entire island and send it. We've done so many. We've it's done it's many. hard to pick. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. so I, I'll I'll probably give you two cakes that that, that, that I'm, I'm I'm proud of. Uh, one was that we did last year with the RTA, which was uh, the ten year metro anniversary. So for the people on YouTube, RTA is the road traffic authority in Dubai so they handle all the public transport yes. and uh, your driver license renewal so yes. for the RTA you did exactly yeah so for the RTA we did it was a huge event that happened in Dubai Mall and it was a cake that weighed uh, half a ton yeah. and it was the entire metro which was elevated on the metro track and uh, it was pretty crazy it was it was it, it was what three days worth of work with everyone else we didn't take any other yeah. orders 24 hour shifts running. Wow. And uh, yeah, we needed a giant truck to transport most of it and then assemble it on site. So we worked with the US Embassy in Afghanistan. In Afghanistan. So, Not here, in uh, Afghanistan. So you're also. If it wasn't COVID, I would probably be traveling again for the 4th of July. Yeah. But we usually did the 4th of July cakes and the Marine Corps cake last year. So you guys follow these guys on Instagram and all of their contact and social information will be at yes. the bottom of the screen or the left or the right but we'll figure that out it is going to be on your screen nonetheless so guys thank you for the information Anytime. i'm really really happy to have uh, understood the yes. history behind it so that we know it's just not another cake shop right. it's got a history it's got a really noble and humble history as well now you've told um, me that we've got two kitchens yes let's go check them out let's check So Vishal is just taking me through into where some of the magic is happening. And look at all of this, look at all of the ingredients. Wow. Look at what is live in the making. Is this for a children's birthday? I'm not too sure, but I would assume so. <laughs>
Well, you never know. Us old people like dragons as well, you know? Yeah. That is amazing. So how long has this been in, in, in the, the making? Works. Yeah. I think uh, we started on this yesterday and it's almost done now. Wow. So yeah. how, how do you... How do you get like this shape? Is all of it icing or is some of it like just obviously so prop? All of this is cake. This, the head is not the cake because um, we wouldn't be able to have it suspended if it was so heavy. Right. And uh, this, for example, is not uh, cake as well. This is essentially made from sugar and from milk, so it's still technically edible. edible. But there's no cake in it. And there's a little frame that we make so that it sort of stands like a wing. That's amazing. So this is kitchen number two, as you guys were mentioning. Yes, exactly. So this is where I guess all of the final pieces take place on yes, all cakes which are baked in kitchen number one or exactly. wh what is the purpose of kitchen number one? So kitchen number one is where all the, the dirty work is done, which is the baking and creating the icings and the, the ganaches and all of that, the chocolates. So we work on all of that over there because it's a it's, it's slightly uh, warmer over there because of the ovens running, and here it's cooler, so you know the designing and everything can happen more uh, easily for the for them. Sorry to disturb you while you're doing fantastic work. It looks amazing. So these are all going out, and what's going to go in the crowns? Cupcakes no, or? It's, it's it's an entire cake. This is a topper for the cake. Wow. Yeah. If that's the topper for the cake. Yes. That's a big cake. This is amazing, guys. So now I'm in the front kitchen and there's a lot of noise, a lot of noise behind me because all the machines are whirring. Look at all of that, man. Imagine if you could just dive into that table, straight into sponge cake. Ravisha. Yeah. <laughs> All this sponge cake here, it looks fantastic. Thank you. So this is where, like you mentioned, all the bases, all of the, all of the foundation of each cake are prepared. Yes. Guys, if you could smell through YouTube, you seriously would be loving this. It smells amazing. Yes. And they've got all the ingredients, baking trays galore. For the amount of baking, for the amount of baking that's taking place, look on the top of that. Look on the top of that set of ovens. For the amount of baking taking place, it's still relatively cool in here. So you've done well to keep the AC running. And if you know all of that, you know, one of the best jam companies. I think it's a French brand, right? Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Where's all my chocolate heads? Look at all that chocolate just hiding, <laughs> hiding behind the Moulinet whisker or blend. Yeah, it's a quick whisk, isn't it? Yeah. So guys, this is amazing and i've really enjoyed my time ravisha vishal don't know where he's disappeared but he's busy as well but thank you so much let's thank do corona you. corona corona but this is sugarholic yes. on mars vlogs youtube channel their information is in the description it's also going to be on screen at some point for you to take note of follow them on instagram support them if you're coming to dubai make sure you just come in and enjoy some of the treats if you're living in the middle east make sure you put an order through and please guys keep it locked Peace out.